It's another episode of the Brett Allen Show, and today we are talking more Moonhaven. I am excited about our guest today, Kadeem Hardison. I mean, I grew up watching you on television, uh, and uh, I even had the flip-up sunglasses back in the day. I begged my parents to go out and buy a pair. Um, If you don't know what we're talking about, a different world, uh, just a, a legend here. Kadeem, thanks for your time. Yeah, my pleasure, Brett. Well, let's talk about Moonhaven. This is a great show. Uh, it's streaming now on AMC Plus. We had Ilet Zura on just a few days ago, uh, your co-star. This is a fantastic project. Uh, very beautifully done, very different. I mean, the the thought that has gone into this down to the language, the music, the story. What was it that attracted you to the project? Um I've read a little bit of the audition sides because I didn't get the script at first. Okay. Um, I read a little bit of the audition sides and I was hooked by the language and 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 what he was proposing, the culture that he was proposing and, and the way of life a hundred some odd years into the future. Then I got the full script and I was like, oh my God, I have to be, I have to be in this. I, I gotta be in this. So yeah, once I read the, the I mean, I was hooked. The, 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 the script was the icing on, on top. I was already into the cake, you know, like with two hands. So by the time I got the script, I was like, now I was like, I can't blow this. Like, don't panic. <laughs> don't get too excited. Calm down, do your thing, you'll be all right. But yeah, it was, it was easy. Just the world that, that Peter Ako, our creator, um, created just the, the the culture that he proposes the way of life is just it's so different and so weird that i thought this is something that people haven't seen before and i'd really like to you know be a part of bringing that to to the front yeah it's interesting like there really has not been anything like this before on television um i mean there's just different depths to this entire thing Um, And we talked about the language and I, that's the part that I find interesting because, you know, you have the Star Treks and you have the Lord of the Rings and the Hobbits and all of this, uh, you know, historical nonfiction or nonfiction where they've created these worlds. And then this comes along. Um, And honestly, like it could be a series of books. It could be a feature film. That's how good it is. Yeah. Now, curiously, I mean, you've worked on a lot of different projects, and of course, I find I love you know what drew you to it. But as an actor who's been in the industry for a very long time, how do you kind of go into a project like this and prepare for it? Because it's very remarkably different than doing a lot of the things that you've done before. Um, it's funny because once you get the audition and you start going over it, you start doing whatever kind of character work that you're going to do, whatever kind of things you want to bring to them. Um, from there, it, it takes on a life of its own and, 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 and you're pretty much set. Then the next thing you have to do is make sure each week you know your lines or you know what you're talking about. If you don't know exactly what you're going to say, a, a, a trick that I use for me is I always just like, I just want to know what I'm talking about and what I'm going to say. I'll figure out when I get there and that'll be a surprise and help me. And then, you know, uh, hopefully help my, 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 my acting, my scene partner. Um, so yeah, so I, you know, <clears throat> I wouldn't study, study hard and prepare, prepare hard. I just wanted to know Arlo's vibe and, 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 and what he's about on the inside. And then the outside will make perfect sense. Then, then whatever I say will make, sorry, it'll be easy for me to remember what it is. It's not like I got to remember lines. I got to remember lines. I just want to know what I'm talking about generally. And then I go in and I'm like, oh, yeah, well, oh, okay, of course, that's what I keep it saying. And then, it's, and then it's, it, it, it snaps into place. It's almost like you pick the lock and then, oh, yeah, that's it. And then you can try different ways and you can be surprised or surprising to your partner. And uh, and it makes it, for me, a lot more fun. 
Yeah, I mean, very believable all the way around. Um, and again, if people don't have Paramount Plus, I, it's very like the AMC cost Plus. of a cup of Starbucks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's, it's AMC Plus. AMC Plus. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, I mean, if you don't have it, you know, it's very easy to get. Um, yeah. I'm curious because you've had very much success and longevity in your career. You've just had a chance to do so many different things. I'm interested to hear from you as an actor and as a storyteller, like how would you define the success that you've had and, and what do you think has caused you to have such longevity and in a career that's so different than, you know, what people might be familiar with a, a normal eight to five job, you know, somebody yeah, right. that works a regular job. Wow. Um, you, you have to be really lucky. You know what I mean? There's, there's a lot of actors out there that are really good that are part of that 98% that we never see and never hear of and they're struggling and, they, and, and they're working towards it. And then there's another percentage of ones that may have gotten one thing that kind of put you put them put you in their mind, mind's eye and and carried them for years and then had to reinvent themselves and so yeah what what is it do I, just um always looking to um pick stuff that interests me okay you know that that's the the biggest thing is that i want to be interested every now and then it's like oh christmas is coming and i want to buy the kid this or some this and that and so you take something that you're like oh yeah nobody will ever see this <laughs> and i'll just go <laughs> run off and, and do this and, and get some extra christmas money or something like that there's been some christmases where i've done that yeah so i can't right. ever say uh, that i've <laughs> never uh not I've, I've never taken a job for money i have just because who knows why what will happen and sometimes those things lead to other things. <clears throat> but um, but yeah, I always make sure that it's something that I'm interested in. And and I'm, I was really nervous about the changes with COVID and how everything became Zoom because where I would win was getting in the room okay. with people and letting you see me and experience me. And and then um that passion would kind of let me know they're all good but i want to work with this guy because he seems like he'd be fun to be around for five months yeah. or four months or six years however long that they run so i was nervous about what i gotta do self tapes and but they're not gonna get to see me like how but luckily when i did <clears throat> teenage bounty hunters uh just before this yeah i met uh angelica Bethelene. And, you know, she had been doing it for a while. She's like, oh, I'll help you with self tapes. I do them all the time. And I'd never done one. And I wasn't looking forward to it. And then she became my scene partner slash director. And she would always just run my self tapes with me. And, and I started getting jobs. <laughs> or I got a couple of jobs and was like, okay, this isn't no, the worst thing in the world. But I was, I was, uh, I was nervous about that. And, and, when Bounty Hunters end, ended because Bounty Hunters was the last time I got to go on over room. And I was like, okay, well, this is, I'm going to win them in this room because they're right there and they can feel it from me. So, so yeah, so I uh, contribute this success. Like, yeah, I just, I pick things that I really like um, uh, and I go after it with both hands. Um, and then usually that translates. And, and people like it. You know, I like to do comedy. I like to do drama. I like to do all of it. I like to find comedy in the drama. I like to find drama in the comedy and, 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 and keep flipping back and forth. And, uh, and it's paid off. It's, it's, it's working for me. At least for yeah, I mean, you've had a really iconic career. I mean, just, oh, it's very true. So I want to wrap up with this idea. Um, again, we talked about it at the beginning. Of course, we want to make sure people watch Moonhaven. We put links in the episode notes for people to click uh, to get the app so they can watch it. This is just a can't miss. But 
I do want to just touch on a different world just for a second here, because I know that was a huge part of your career. And I'm interested to know when that ended for you. And I mean, at that time when that show was on, it was groundbreaking. I mean, the show was just hot, um, you know, and I'm curious for you when that ended, was it, were you kind of challenged a little bit to find work after that because people sort of saw you as that particular character and uh i'm just interested you know because i I, i've had other actors on who have been on those shows and then they come off of it and it's like oh we want you know a Dwayne wayne type of character we want an elven type of character um and then it's really hard but you did it so i'm curious like what was that like for you in that moment when you it ended yeah, and it then it's a, like now I got to keep working? <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, it was. I was a little bummed out because I couldn't get into any of the cool um, the boys in the hoods and, and minister societies and dead presidents. Like I guess they saw me more as a college guy. Okay. And, uh, 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 upscale was a strange term that was always thrown around. They did. They didn't say downscale, but upscale meant you were smart, I guess, articulate. I don't, I don't know. But it was, it was, uh, I was, I guess the stigma was that that was me. And, uh, okay. and so, yeah, so the first thing I think I wanted to do, I, I did uh, a movie about the Black Panthers with uh, Mario Van Peebles directed. I just wanted to do films. I wanted, to, I wanted to take chances. I wanted to, I wanted, you know, I, I thought a different world was going to last maybe six episodes top. Yeah. When I got the job, I didn't think it was going to last. I, the first season, it wasn't the same show that it ended up being. Right. And uh, so I thought, no, oh, I'll do this for a little while, make a little money, and then boom, get back to chasing down the movies or whatever it was that I was chasing. So yeah, it was a, uh, it was it was rough the, the first couple of years because I just saw all these cool things coming down and. And I was like, dang, I didn't even get a meeting or an audition or a call. Like this wow. was casting. Like they would just, they, they would things would just happen, and I was like, whoa, whoa, that was I, I, like trying to catch a cab in New York. Um, so, uh, so yeah, so I just grinded, stuck it out, stayed, you know, played a little bit into my lane, played a little bit out of my lane, tried to find some drama to do, tried to find some comedy to do, just kept working, just kept working, kept working. And, you know, 30 years later, here I am. Yeah, I mean, we had Jeffrey Owens on a few months ago, and he shared the same similar things. Um, Because I don't think anybody anticipated those shows to be what they were supposed to be. And they wound up just being smash hits. Uh, And television, that was when people made appointments to sit down and actually watch a show. Uh, we yeah. didn't have streaming or DVR or anything like that, yeah, uh, no but binging. <laughs> no binging, uh, <laughs> unless you were fortunate enough to have a VHS or Betamax and you could yeah, take right. the time to record. Takes, yeah, and yeah. have a stack of tapes in your I house. I know, yeah. I digress. Um, <laughs> but Kadeem, it's been a pleasure chatting with you again. I It's just been a lot of fun. I want people to watch Moonhaven. It's fantastic. You and your character, you just all do such a beautiful job. Um, I know you've been promoting the heck out of this. So I thank you uh, for your graciousness and your time. Be sure to check out Moonhaven, folks. We'll link it in the show notes. Kadeem, thank you so much. It's been an honor. Thank you, Brett.